Good morning. Welcome to our home here in Columbia. I'm Pastor John Starwell. I'm pastor of St. John's Lutheran Church in Lexington, South Carolina, which is a historic congregation founded in the early 1830s, uh, a congregation that has served the Gilbert, South Carolina, Lexington, South Carolina, the Lexington County area for generations and generations. It's good to see everyone coming on this morning. Good morning, Michael. Good to see you. Can't wait to, uh, for that long hike together. Uh, I'm ready and ready and willing this morning. I have my coffee ready. I've, uh, I've got my uh, Bible with me and I've got my, um, I've got my Celtic book of prayer this morning. And while I light my candle, I am a little bit behind on, uh, on my morning duties. But uh, while I light my candle, I want to say that I'm going to read a prayer for you from the, um, the Celtic book of prayer. And let me, um, I'm going to, sh well, you know what, if I show you, it's just going to be reverse printing. It looks like this. Just imagine the printing, but backwards. In fact, let me try to do this for you. I'm going to, uh, no, I'm not. I'm going to try to reverse. The Celtic book of prayer and the introductions by Richard Foster. I want to read a prayer from th this book that's really a beautiful prayer this morning as we gather together, and then we'll talk a little bit about a couple of announcements, but mainly we'll be reading two passages from the lectionary this morning. We're going to be reading from Psalm 33, and then we're going to read from uh, Acts chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. And if you're familiar with that citation, that is a story of the Pentecost event. This coming Sunday is Pentecost Sunday. And churches throughout the world will be celebrating uh, what people very briefly call the birthday of the church. But it's the day that the Holy Spirit entered into a room of frightened disciples and generated the power within them to become the seed and the foundation of the Christian church. It's an incredible story with images of fire and wind. And so this Sunday, as we come together at the 930 service from St. John's Lutheran Church, again, you can stream that. Uh, 9.30 Sunday morning at the church Facebook page. The handle is Welcome to St. John. Uh, as we gather together, I want to urge you to form a watch party on Facebook. And that is a way for you to collect friends in a small virtual room. And you can worship together and you can kind of talk to one another in the pews, more or less. And as you do that, I want to invite you, change your profile image out Sunday morning. Take your regular picture away from profile and add in it a, uh, an image of a flame or a Pentecost image you find online that uh, includes the color red. And that will be our way of wearing red in a pew. So again, uh, Pentecost Sunday is this Sunday and I invite you to that at 930 Sunday morning streaming from Welcome to St. John's, our St. John's Facebook handle. And then finally, one other sharing Announcements, I shared this yesterday. Our working group is uh, scheduling a second meeting to come together and talk again about all the details related to, um, to coming together for in-person worship again. Um, we are basing our decisions on CDC and some governmental resources and Senate resources. The South Carolina Senate has a resource out and has had one for a couple of weeks and the South Carolina Senate will produce another resource in June. All of our decisions for coming together for in-person worship again are based on the principles of the phased approach. Phase one, uh, we don't move into phase two until after we have watched 14 straight days of decreased reports of uh, coronavirus in the area. And that's the general principle used throughout the churches uh, and throughout the ELCA. So that working group's coming together. And then one last thing, this week I've been sharing with you uh, that our words can be like God's words, to paraphrase the scriptures. And so I've invited you every day this week to think of one person, one person, and throughout today, um, think on that person, pray for that person. And if you see that person today, or if you call that person or FaceTime them or whatever, um, share words that are so affirming and creative and renewing that your words to that person are like God's words. And so one day, one person, each day of this week, focus on that one person. Pray for that person. Share words with that person that are affirming and renewing and creative. 
Well, those are just some of the announcements to share this morning. We're going to go ahead and uh, we'll open this morning with a prayer. And this prayer, again, is from the, um, the Celtic, Celtic Daily Prayer. And it, the introduction is by Richard Foster. And this is a prayer, actually, for sleepless nights. I know it's morning. But you know what? Sometimes those nights are a little sleepless. We're not out as much. We're not exercising as much naturally. And sometimes nights can become sleepless. Well, here is a prayer. Join with me. You who keeps the stars alight and our souls burning with a light beyond that of the stars, grant that they may shine before you as the stars forever and ever. And as you hold the stars burning in the light, then no one sees them, so hold the light burning in our souls when we see neither you nor that light, but are buried in the grave of sleep and forgetfulness. The sky is bright with uncountable stars. I know they are uncountable. I have tried this impossible task these sleepless nights. When are you, O oh Lord, as the fog of fatigue numbs me of all but the desperate desire to sleep? Comfort me, Lord, with your presence, as the ever-watchful mother soothes the fretful, feverish child. Grant me the gift of sleep, and be a guardian of my dreams, that I may know you through them also, or if I must watch with you through the long, hard night, share with me the burden of your heart, that my sleepless hours be spent in purposeful prayer. And if you bless me once more with the gift of the morning, may I rise, grateful to greet you, ready to walk with you into the tasks of the day. Wow. You know, maybe it's because a lot of my heritage is Scottish and Irish, but I love the Celtic book of prayer. Okay, we're going to read from Acts, the second chapter, verse uh, 1 through 11, and this is the story of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, and they were together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the gift gave them the ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native languages of each, and amazed and astonished they asked, Are not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it that we each of us hear in our own native language Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to the Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs in our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? That's always an amazing story to read. The story of Pentecost, um, Acts chapter 2, 1 through 12, actually. Let's continue with the reading from the 33rd Psalm. And I'm going to read the 33rd Psalm this morning for you, um, verses 12 through 22. Happy is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he has chosen as his heritage. The Lord looked us down from heaven. He sees all humankind from where he sits in thrones, enthroned he watches all the inhabitants of the earth. He who fashions the hearts of them all and observes all their deeds. A king is not saved by his great army. A warrior is not delivered by his great strength. The war horse is a vain hope for victory and by its great might it cannot save. Truly the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his steadfast love to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and shield. Our heart is made glad in him because we trust in his holy name. 
Let your steadfast love, O Lord, be upon us, even as we hope in you. Let's pause for prayer. There'll be a moment for you to offer up names for prayer. God of all hope, we come to you after a night of refreshing sleep. Some of us come to you after a restless night, not able to dream and praying that this night you may let your fog of fatigue rest over us and that you be a part of our dreams this night. But in the meanwhile, this day, be with us, guide us, strengthen us, um, enable us to be your servants. Help us to look out for moments of the holy in our lives and help us to be mindful of that one person of our lives today. Let our prayers for that person and our words to that person be as your words, full of renewal and hope and grace. Bless God those who struggle with the virus and bless those who work in hospitals and medical institutions as pharmacists and those who are institutional environmental workers working in the hallways, cleaning the facilities. Be with those who are first responders and bless those who work in the public now. We ask that you would guard and protect those who struggle mightily with COVID-19 and that you be with families who struggle and yearn to be with their loved ones. Comfort those who grieve the death of sisters and brothers, companions and colleagues, and strengthen those that we name in our hearts now, especially the sister and brother, Terry and Brenda of your daughter, Wanda, and those that we name aloud. For Jim and Renata, for Debbie and Hannah and Clara. These things we pray in your name. Amen. Enjoy your day. Be a blessing to that one person today. Give them words of hope and renewal and grace. Enjoy your day. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.